I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today we're going to visit the tea shop in Kyoto that's said to have created mitarashi dango. And then I'm going to show you how you can make it at home. So stick around. Dango is the Japanese word for round dumplings and mitarashi dango is made by skewering small balls of mochi called shiratama and grilling them before glazing them with a sweet and savory sauce. Kamo Mitadashi Chaya is an old tea house near Shimogamo Shrine in the north part of Kyoto. They're credited with creating this tasty snack, and I headed there a few weeks ago to try it out. Their version has five balls on each skewer, and they're grilled over charcoal before being glazed in a sauce that's more sweet than savory. For my version, I've adapted it so it's super easy to make at home, and I've glazed it with a thick, savory sweet sauce that coats each skewer of mitarashi dango in a glistening blanket of soy sauce and brown sugar. Looks tasty, right? Let's have a look at our ingredients. For the dango, I'm using 90 grams of shiratamako or glutinous rice flour. I've also got a quarter cup plus a half tablespoon of water and a quarter teaspoon of salt. For the sauce, I'm using a quarter cup of water, two tablespoons of mirin, one tablespoon of rice syrup, one tablespoon of kokuto, two teaspoons of soy sauce, and one teaspoon of potato starch. The first thing you want to do is soak your skewers in water. This not only keeps them from burning, it's also going to make it easier to skewer the dango. Next, I'm going to put a large pot of water on to boil. To make the dango, I'm going to add the shiratamako and salt to a bowl and whisk these together. Then I'm going to add the water and use chopsticks to stir it in until the flour is evenly hydrated. A lot of recipes call for a mix of both glutinous rice flour and short grain rice flour, but this is mostly a relic of historical times when glutinous rice was really expensive and it was often cut with regular rice to lower the cost. These days, there isn't a huge difference in price, and you'll get a better chewy texture by using 100% glutinous rice flour. Okay, this is looking perfect, so I'm gonna use my hand to knead this together into a smooth mass that feels like Play-Doh to me, but in Japan, they say it's supposed to feel like your earlobe. If it's too sticky, just add an extra teaspoon of shiratamako, if it's too crumbly, add a teaspoon of water to bring the dough together. This is looking perfect, so let's shape our dangle. The easiest way to portion the dough evenly is to use a scale, and I'm looking for a weight that's just over 9 grams, or about a third of an ounce. Then I'm going to roll the dough between my hands to turn it into a sphere. You want to get the balls around the same size so they cook through in the same amount of time, but there's no need to be a perfectionist about the shape. The important thing is to have fun, and this is a great project to do with kids. Okay, our dango are done, and our water's boiling, so let's cook these up! Give them a minute to set on the outside, and then give them a stir to make sure they don't stick together or the pot. Now you want to boil them until they float to the surface. This should take about 3 to 4 minutes in total. Once they float to the surface, set a timer for 2 minutes. Be sure to give the dango a stir periodically so they cook through evenly. Once the timer is up, use a slotted spoon to transfer the dango to a bowl of cold water to chill them. You don't want to use ice water here because it'll make the dumplings tough. Once they've cooled to room temperature, drain the dango to keep them from bloating. Now we just need to skewer these onto our soaked bamboo skewers. In Kyoto, it's traditional to add 5 dango on each skewer, but in Tokyo, we typically only add 4. So how many you add is up to you. Once all of the dango are skewered, we need to brown them. Today I'm going to do this using a rippin' hot cast iron skillet, but you can do this over a charcoal grill if you have one. 
Because of the extremely high temperature of the pan, I don't recommend using a non-stick pan for this. Just make sure your skillet is well seasoned and nice and hot or your dumplings are gonna stick to the pan. If your dango aren't perfectly round, you may find that some of them don't make contact with the pan. So I usually use a spatula to give them a little press which will ensure they brown evenly. While we wait for those to brown, I wanted to let you know that you can pick up the kokuto, mochiko, and soy sauce that I used in this recipe on my online ingredient shop on Kokoro Care Packages. I'll include a link in the description down below and be sure to use coupon code MARKSFAVORITES to get 10% off your first order. The dango still needs a few minutes, so let's make our sauce by adding the potato starch, kokuto, water, mirin, soy sauce, and rice syrup to the pan. Then I'm going to stir the mixture together without turning on the heat. If you don't have kokuto, dark brown sugar will work, and any invert sugar like corn syrup or honey will work in place of the rice syrup. Okay, our dango should be ready to flip, so let's have a look. Yup, these are looking nice and crispy, and they smell like rice crackers. Be sure to give them a few presses on this side as well to make sure they're making good contact with the pan. Now we want to give the sauce a stir to reincorporate any settled starch and turn the heat on. Bring the mixture to a boil while stirring it constantly. The sauce will get thicker as it boils, so keep an eye on it and don't overdo it. Okay, our sauce is nice and thick and you can see a little tail that follows the spatula around, so this is good to go. And our dango are looking good as well, so let's plate these up. I'm going to set a few skewers of dumplings onto a bamboo leaf. Then I'm going to drizzle on a generous amount of sauce to glaze our mitarashi dango. The mirror-like shine of the glaze is the hallmark of this snack, so don't be shy with the sauce. Okay, that should do it, but this is looking a little lonely, so I'm going to stack on another skewer and glaze that as well. Beautiful, aren't they? So let's try these out. That mitarashi sauce smells like a summer festival on a stick. Let's try it out. Itadakimasu! Mmm, look at that. <laughs> You've got that nutty flavor of the toasted dango with that sweet and savory sauce on the outside. The flavor combination is kind of like a rice cracker, but then you've got the soft, pillowy texture of the dango that's a bit like mochi. It's soft and tender, but it's also got a little bit of chew. Oh. It's the perfect snack for those times when you have a craving for something both savory and sweet. <laughs> well, I... I think I'm gonna have a few more of these, but check out this playlist for more delicious Japanese snack recipes, and I'll catch you in the next one.